Hi, I'm Dennis with TerraFlex, and with me here today are Jen and Emily, and they're... Gosh, they're going to uh, take off the spare tires off each one of these Jeeps so that we can take a look at our new tire carrier system. Now, if you've had the opportunity to take a look at the install video that we did on our adjustable mount, you've been able to see a, a mount that offers additional strength, affordability, and even the option to upgrade. All right. You guys hurry if you can. We don't want to take this four-hour video out of this thing. Be careful, too. That tire's a little heavier, and I don't want to scratch that bumper. Now, when we added our hinged tire carrier to the original tire mount, we removed all load from that tailgate. A 33-inch tire is a great fit, and it won't cause any door damage whatsoever. Now, both these carriers are a great option depending on what your needs are. I needed something that would carry 125 pounds of manhood on the back of my Jeep, but still enable my wife to open the tailgate. Oh my gosh, it's 60 pounds a piece. Can you guys get this? TerraFlex came up with the ultimate solution by combining the two tire carriers. These forged hinges, coupled with a cast aluminum carrier that's worthy of a JK, doesn't look like something I made in my garage. It has strength, dependability, it's got great design. It makes me happy. First up, let's take off the spare tire. Grab a 13 millimeter socket and remove the eight bolts on the tire carrier. Twist and pull out one of the rubber bumpers, the one closest to the hinge. Pop off all of the hinge covers. Now you won't be needing them anymore. They come off pretty easy, just give them a good pull. We need to support the door. Now I tell you what size block to use, but we really don't know what kind of a bumper you have. Just use something that'll rest on the bumper and just touch the door to give the door some support when that hinge is removed. Use a 13 millimeter socket on the hinge brackets themselves. Speaking of hinges, use a number 50 Torx or the supplied Torx L key and remove both hinges. Remember to keep the gate closed, but swing the hinge open to access the inner bolts. With the hinges and carrier removed, take a second to wipe everything down so you're not pinching a bunch of gravel between the bracket and the door. To make it easier to start the bolts in the carrier, rotate the bracket open 15 degrees or so and install the carrier hinges back into the stock location. Oh, use the original bolts. Have one all Loctited up and ready to install. In fact, let's use Loctite on all the bolts we'll be installing. With the outer hinge bolts in and lightly snugged, swing the carrier open and install the inner hinge bolts. Get all the hinge bolts started, enough to support the carrier, but don't tighten them yet. Okay, this step will save you some time. Start a bolt in one of the bolt holes in the carrier, one furthest from the hinges, and just snug it up. All of the carrier bolts should be lined up enough to start a bolt, but hold off installing any until we get the hinges tightened up. Start with the exposed hinge bolts and tighten them up. Now we want them tight enough to support the carrier. Remove the single bolt you just installed in the carrier and swing it open. Keep the tailgate closed throughout the entire install. Doing so will make any door adjustments completely unnecessary. With the carrier open, it will become apparent why we send a number 50 Torx L key tool. Use the supplied tool to tighten those inner hinge bolts. They're kind of hard to get at. Make sure they're tight. With the four hinge bolts tightened, install the supplied bolts on the four inner recess pockets in the carrier. They're a little longer than the original bolts. Grab the adjustable mount and hinged carrier. Just reuse the factory bolts and start a couple on the carrier side of the bracket. Now you'll notice two nicely packaged metal spacers and four rubber gaskets. They came with the tire mount. Use two of the rubber gaskets to insulate the carrier from the door and just tighten up the door.
you'll find the tire mount is a perfect fit without the spacers. The spacers and remaining gaskets are only used when the tire mount is installed on a standalone carrier. Now just tighten them up. The four sets of holes in the mounting plate are for various tire sizes. The lower set of holes are for stock or standard Jeep spares. The next set of holes are for 33 inch tires, followed by a 35 inch tire similar to what we'll be installing today. And finally, there's a set of holes for a 37 inch tire. The wheel studs are not installed in the tire mount because of the various tire size options. The studs do need to be pressed into the mount. Now using a hammer to drive the studs in, although satisfying, may result in a loose stud. And a loose stud will tend to spin in the bracket when removal of the spare is required. We recommend using a press and pushing the studs in. Or, for those of you without a press in your driveway, try the following technique. Find an oversized stack of washers or a spacer of some kind, even a large lug nut will do, and use it as a surface to push against. With the stud in the appropriate tire size hole, slide the spacer you've chosen over the wheel stud and use a little grease on the threads of the stud and probably between the spacer and the lug nut as well. Thread the lug nut onto the stud and tighten it against the spacer you're using. Now an air gun will really speed up the process, but you will be able to pull the wheel stud into place with hand tools as well. Each spare will require different spacing. The design of our new carrier allows for infinite tire to gate adjustment. You'll be able to run the tire as tight to the gate as you'd like. To get an idea of where to position the tire mount, use anything that is relatively straight and lay it on the tire to represent the surface of the tailgate. Now in this case, we used a broom handle. With the measuring tape, we measured from the hub mounting surface of the rim to the bottom of the broom handle. We also measured from the mounting plate to the lower part of the carrier. You will find the tire will contact the carrier before it touches the door. There are two hub mount adjuster bolts in the kit. We'll be using both bolts to ensure a tight rattle free carrier. Depending on your spare, you may find that only one of the bolts will actually fit into the slotted adjuster hole in the tire mounting plate. Now that will work fine. The single bolt will act as a safety on the carrier, preventing the tire from ever coming loose, even in the event of a loose clamp bolt. The second bolt will be installed behind the tire mount adjustment and provide additional clamping force, eliminating any rattle potential. Once we have our tire mount in its preliminary position, we can snug the clamp bolts and do a test fit on the spare. With the spare installed, go ahead and tighten the lug nuts, making sure there is not too much pressure on the tire to tailgate contact points. We're looking for a snug fit without stressing any of the mounts. This last step is optional. However, a third brake light is mandatory in many areas. We will use the original brake light in a slightly modified state. All we need to do is trim the mounting bracket from the light assembly. Using a hand saw or a cutoff wheel, trim off the bracket so it's flush with the light. There's really nothing to measure, just make it look good. Use the original hardware from the light and bolt the light to the third brake light bracket. The two studs on the bracket will fit into the remaining lug holes in the wheel. Route the light harness in attractive fashion and plug it in. That's it. I'm Dennis Wood, and I approve this message.